Welcome back to another episode of All the Mod 7. Today, we are going to be getting started building our fission reactor. And I think we also get to make the turbine, I want to say. I think that's also what we're doing. Pretty sure we're going to try and do both. We're going to knock both of them out. Before we get into any of that, I just got to say, we got some really exciting events happening this week over on my Twitch channel. Twitch.tv slash AlfredGG. This Friday, I am going to be starting a special stream a very special stream i am going to be creating the all the mod seven star in one stream starting from scratch i will be starting a brand new world loading into it and the stream will not end until i create the all the mod seven star now you will be seeing this video on friday it'll be coming out friday morning so it's Friday morning for y'all, so hello to the future. So if you guys want to drop on by my Twitch channel, make sure to check the description and uh, click that link to Twitch. Aside from that, guys, we're so close to 1,000. So if you like these videos, make sure to hit like, subscribe, do your thing, and let's get started. You might be wondering why I'm in a hazmat suit. It's because I'm kind of scared we're going to explode. I'm terrified, to be honest with you, I'm kind of scared. I never made one of these before and everybody tells me go blow up and I don't want to die. So I got hazmat suit all case it does blow up. I mean, if it takes the stuff out, it just what it takes out lithium. It's not too big a deal. That's, that's not the worst thing in the world, right? Yeah, the hazmat suit's pretty easy to make. Just, I mean, it's mostly just lead and what, like orange dye, I think it is. Yeah, it's black dye for the boots. So as long as you got a bunch of lead, you can walk around in a hazmat suit. Now keep in mind, hazmat suits, uh, you know, they don't offer any protection at all. So if you're doing like me and you're flying around and, uh, you know, you forget to turn on the hover mode on your jetpack and you go her splat, it's going to hurt. So we're going to be building this fission reactor and stuff over here. Okay, so we're going to be building it in like this... I think the turbine is going to go right here and I think the reactor is going to go right here. And the reason why I'm doing the reactor and stuff like that is because I'm going to have to set up a basically a facility or a place so where we can take care of the nuclear waste that comes from it. And uh, the turbine really just needs to be input output. So basically I build the turbine, which I might build the turbine first. Not 100% sure yet, but we're going to get there. Turbine goes right here. All it really needs to, to have is a way to output power and a way to have steam inside of it. And then the reactor which will be right here which needs it needs a way to get water inside of it off put the steam that it creates it needs fuel input the fissile fuel input so there's there's a bunch of fun with that we need to output the waste as well and that'll go right over here let's start off i guess building the turbine first the turbine's actually really easy to make and we're not going to be able to really do anything with the turbine itself until i get the fission reactor going but i already have all of the recipes so if i come in here and i type in turbine i have a bunch of these recipes that i'm going to need that's kind of important to have and I also have them up over here so we can check out exactly what we need a turbine very simple you need turbine casings just like pretty much everything else in the in entire world i mean you just you need the turbines i can go ahead and click these turbine casings let's go ahead and grab two stacks of them and get that started and there we go two stacks of turbine casings sweet so turbines obviously need some kind of blades and rotors in the middle. And I believe we're going to do it five high. So we need five of these turbine rotors in the middle here. So I'm going to go ahead and make five of those. And then you're going to need, I think it's, I think it's 10 blades. I'm not hundred percent sure, but you know, we'll, we'll build it as we go. So I'm just going to go ahead and make 10 of these blades here and uh, we'll, we'll keep going. I believe it's two blades per rotor. Could be wrong, but we'll see. So you also need valves. Valves basically say how things go in and out. With the turbine, it's actually very easy. You only need a couple of these. You need one that basically outputs power and one that will input steam. So you're gonna need a couple of these. And if we need more of these later, we can. We could just click them and, and make them, okay? And we're gonna need vents. I think we're gonna need about, I wanna say that we're gonna need about 24 of them. I'm just gonna go ahead and make 24 and if I need some later, but the vents basically just offload some of that uh, steam or offload some of the, the water at the very end whenever we create stuff. And it also is a vent for steam, which is which is nice. We're also gonna need a couple of other things which are very, very important too. So let me go over here and change to crafting so we can take a look at some of those things that we'll need. So I, over here on the left side, I actually have the things that we need. We're gonna need one of these rotational complexes. So if I type in rotational complex, 
I've got one of them, or I have the recipe rather. So let me go ahead and make one of those because we will need one of these rotational complexes. This is what you put on top. Is it a complex I? Like, okay, listen, complexes, that sounds weird. Basically you put this on top of your rotor and uh, it's what helps generate power. What does it take to make one of these? Is it, is it? kind of crazy. Let's go look at it. So, so you need two of these advanced control circuits. You need these steel ingots and you need infused allies. It's actually taken a while. I did notice that these chunks out here weren't force loaded because if you look at the very bottom left corner down here, we kind of got a problem. Uh, I'm at 25 out of 25, which is, uh, it is not good. So I had to go unload some chunks and I'm going to have to go into the config later on down the road to fix that. So I'm going to head back to the factory here and I'm going to see what's going on as to why this isn't working. It's all force loaded. Is there something going on here? Maybe we got to go upstairs and check it out. Maybe, maybe we see what's going on. It's holding a crafting monitor is good. Did it all get rotational? Oh, oh, because I'm only displaying craftables. Oh, that makes makes a lot more sense. Oh. Okay, well, I made one of them. Just didn't know I made one of them. That's all right. We could always just do at mech to make this a whole lot easier because it's all a part of mechanism, right? So we made one of those rotational complexes, complex question mark, one rotational complex. We're going to go ahead and make eight of these pressure dispensers. So if I go, or I think it's to call dispensers. Yeah, dispersers, dispersers. They're not dispensers. I guess they technically could be dispensers, like a little Pez dispenser, but for pressure. We're going to make eight of these because these go around our rotational complex. So that's going to be kind of important. And then we are going to need about nine of these electromagnetic coils. They're pretty cool. They're pretty easy to make. Actually, let me show you the recipe for the pressure disperser because you guys want to see the recipe. I mean, it's kind of important to know what you need. It's really just iron bars and most of this stuff is actually pretty simple to make. And you could even check out the basically what it does and is converting kinetic energy from a rotational complex into usable electricity. Now, you only really have to use one of these, but every video that I've watched use nine and I'm like, I'm just going to do it. All right, so let's go make all nine of those. And then on top of that, we're also going to need these saturating condensers. So if we read the description here, a block that condenses steam processed by an industrial turbine into reusable water. So these are basically just like you, you put these inside of it above the electromagnetic coils and uh, it will convert that steam into reusable water. So the reason why you want these or the reason why people usually get these is because you want to convert, especially if you're using a reactor, you convert it back into to water so you can run it back through your uh, reactor and keep up with it. So here I'm going to go ahead and craft me about nine of them. And then for now, I already have some of this structural glass, so I'm not really kind of hurting on having the structural glass. I will need reactor glass for the reactor itself, but let's just stick to building the turbine for right now to keep things simple. And if I forgot anything, I could just cry deeply in Spanish and uh, make some from here, right? Maybe question mark. So here we go. Corner it out here. Let's make sure we're well within chunk borders. We are sweet. And we're going to go ahead and make this one five wide. Oh, oh. Ooh, oh, it's okay because there's a chunk there. And we're going to make this one five out just like this. Well, actually, no, that's a little bit longer than five, isn't it? Because this would be five right here. And then we're just going to fill in the bottom here. So turbine stuff, standard stuff. I mean, it's just like your reactor that we built with bigger reactors. We're going to build upwards five. So w instead of the actual reactor, this is going to be five blocks up because we're going to have five rods. So you actually do want to make sure it's going five up and it's technically six if you count the base, right? All right, here we go. I'm going to cap these off a little bit later, but this is kind of where we want to think about our valves and stuff like power in, power out. I'm going to put both of them on this side just because I don't really want to do anything on this side right here. And you can put the vents or you can put the, the valves. You can put these valves pretty much anywhere on the, just like building the reactors before it's, you can put them anywhere on the side. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start building this up. So we're going to take our turbine rotors and our turbine blades, and we're going to start working these down. So bam, place the rotor down. We're going to build it up, right? five tall and then I'm going to take these blades and I'm just going to right click them on the base until it goes all the way up and let's see we did make exactly enough the reason why you've got to be careful about this and I can go ahead and show you all this so if I make this one more block higher we run the chance of this rotor actually coming out right here this rotor blade coming out and hitting this outside rim so this is why if you're going to build it a certain like a certain height like if you go to six you're going to need to build this a little bit wider right so we can't have that so i've got to break it so this is five rotors tall 
10 blades total. And if you just click it on the bottom, it'll automatically build it up. And now this is where we start having fun. You want to pay a place your rotational complex right on top. And then from here, you want to surround it in those pressure dispersers. Just like this, you take your electromagnetic coil and you place it all the way up top. Just like that, cover the top. Now, if you only have the resources for one, or if this is your first time building a reactor or whatever, you can always just build the one in the middle. And as long as they are connecting like this, as long as they are touching, it will work. So you could have two, you could have three across, you could have whatever, but you can't say have a space in between. So like if I took and I moved this one like this, and I placed it here, you couldn't do this. It wouldn't count that third one. So, or that at corner one, so technically the fourth. But for us, we're just gonna build all the way across. And this is should be all connected, but my connected texture stuff is acting weird. So I don't kind of know what's gonna, going on with that. Like what is going on? Okay, this is what it's supposed to look like when they're all connected. I, I don't know if it absolutely has to be or if it's just a bug with my visuals, but this is what it's supposed to look like. Okay, so from here, we're gonna put those saturating condensers on top of it. All this does is it just takes and again, converts that steam, the excess steam into water so we can put it back into our reactor. And from here, we're gonna go ahead and take and put some vents across just like this. We're gonna put six on each side, just like this. And that should be all the ones that we have. Just because I like to be a French, I'm gonna go ahead and put this structural glass like this. I'm gonna fill in the sides like this. Just to make it a little easier, I'm gonna use my wand to fill in the sides. All right, now that the glass is all done, we're gonna just build up into the corners like this and flatten out the top. And now to fill in the top. And boop, done. It didn't do no fancy stuff for me to see that it was done, but it's done. So now we have pretty much everything that we need. It's pretty much done. We have production FEs. That's it's not going to show anything because obviously there's nothing in there. There's no water. There's no nothing like that. So we have to make steam to make this thing work. So it doesn't actually do anything without steam. And because we have nothing to produce steam, God, God, we're going to make the mechanism fusion react. Once we have that fission reactor going, it will give us enough steam to to make this thing go crazy, right? And it'll also take some water and all the good stuff. If you go over here to the main right here, or if you go over to the turbine statistics, rather, it'll show you this max production is at one point. 0.09 million FE. Max water output is 576,000 millibuckets. Now, all of this is based off of how many coils you have, how many blades you have, how many dispersers, vents, all that good stuff. But we're just making something very simple, nothing too crazy, and it's pretty much ready to go. So these vents right here will be an output kind of thing. So this will be where you'll put like your output to your reactor. So let's say I go three over. And uh, this is kind of where the reactor will pump water from. So the water can come from right here. And then we're going to need an input for steam. So the input will be right here from the reactor. So let me go ahead and grab that ultimate pressurized tube. Go boop, boop, boop. And uh, when we connect our reactor up, that's where we'll, where we'll use it. And then this is going to be our output for power. We'll use this a little bit later and I'll set this up a little bit better once we have this all set up. Matter of fact, I kind of have an idea that I think would look a little bit cooler. So instead of putting the vents down here, I'm still gonna put one vent or valve rather right here. And then because I have this pipe all the way up here, I think I'd much rather prefer it if we did it all in one little setting and put the other valve up here. And uh, now we basically have a turbine reactor ready to go and my connected textures are still messing up, which is kind of weird. See, it's not messing up with my beautiful shaders. But dang, that sun's bright. Okay, I guess once I reset my shaders, that actually fixed it, but that's cool. All right, time to build this reactor. All right, so we no longer need this turbine blade, the rotor, we don't need the turbine casings anymore, none of that, but we will need to start making that reactor stuff. So if I type in, well, let's actually do this. Let's type in at reactor or at mechanism rather, and then type in reactor. I have a bunch of these recipes here. So there's actually a bunch of recipes that you actually have to have to make this work. And they're all over here. They're all over here. Same thing we, you know, not keep them over here just for us to see. So if I come over here and look at the fission reactor, it is going to take a little bit more stuff to make the fission reactor casings and stuff because it does take steel casings. Steel casings are steel mixed with osmium and some clear glass or glass in general. And uh, yeah, it takes a little bit more to make, right? And uh, we're going to need about the same amount. So I'm going to request that here in a minute. 
We're gonna need these reactor ports. Now the ports do actually have to be configured and they take some of those casings and they also take some elite control circuits. This is kind of one of the biggest reasons why I was like, hey guys, let's go set up that automated. That makes it very easy for us to just request these things. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a fission reactor logic adapter. I'm not fully prepared to set this up, but this basically sets, or it basically set allows you to have your reactor controlled by a redstone signal. And if you do some advanced setups, it'll basically say, hey, when do I turn this off? Do I turn this off when the reactor is hitting like really bad temps or when do I do it? What do I do? So this is good to have. You're going to need two of them if you are going to set up certain things, sometimes even three or four. This is this is kind of nice to have. You're going to need these fission fuel assemblies. You're going to need a bunch of these. These are the things think of like the fuel rods that we had in the big reactors. It's it's the same exact kind of style, same thing, but we're actually going to set them up differently. Uh, and I'll do the math later because, you know, I'm so good at math. Control rod assemblies, literally just the thing you put on top of the fuel rods, just the same thing we normally do. I think we're actually going to need five of these, but we'll make these in a little bit. And then that's pretty much it, I believe, from what we need from the fission reactors for now. And if I miss something, my reactor explodes. Uh, oof. So let's go ahead and make those things. So just like we did before, so it's three high. We're going to start right here. So one, two, three, four, five, bam. One, two, three, four, bam. Right, this, boop, 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 boop. Same, same size, same everything. We're gonna do the bottom just like we did last time. The connected textures are gonna mess up because they hate me. And then we'll do, we can go ahead and do the rods and stuff real quick just to make it easy. So with this, you don't want them to touch. So you can do it like this, right? And go up from here. So we're gonna go ahead and use all of these. All right, and then at the top of these, you put these control rod assemblies. We're gonna go ahead and go up with the reactor casings, just like the outer, except for at the top here, we can go ahead and do one more extra and then we'll glass that off. To connect these up to the side here, I'm gonna go ahead and place this reactor port right here, a port right there. I'm gonna place a port right here. So basically what I need to do is I need to get out my configurator and this is going to be outputting water, right? So we're going to need to make this an input, which is that's what that is. And this one is right here is going to be outputting into here. This is going to be our steam output. So if we shift right click, it says output waste and then output coolant. That's what we want. All right. Get low. I guess it'll connect once we finish the stuff. But anyway, that's it's supposed to be like that. So if I do the same thing here, mechanical pipe, put that there. That's gonna be our input right there and we can just leave it as that. So over here, we're gonna put something for outputting waste, like right here. So outputting waste, we're gonna shift right click here until it says output waste. And then over here, I'm gonna put one of these and we're gonna make sure leave this to input because this is gonna be for our extra water and stuff. So let me go ahead and set that up. So sink, pipe, 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 pipe. And then we'll configure this later to pull out we don't want to do it right now. So now all that's left is for us to glass this off. And before I forget, we're actually going to go ahead and make and put those two pieces of the logic adapters right here, right? So bam. And then I'm going to put another one right here and we'll, we'll configure these later on. It doesn't matter for right now, but we're just going to leave them for right there. And bam, done. So I'm not going to turn this on because you can see that the temperature is already there, right? You see this thing is already got some temperature inside of it. It's going to blow up and kill us all. We got burn rate, heat rate. I just, I don't want to die. I don't want to die. I'm afraid of dying in this game. I don't know why. Like, I know I can respawn and everything will be gravy. Basically, this is done. So it's configured. It's done. You can come over here to the stats. It'll show you that is the heat capacity is this. Boil efficiency is this max burn rate, rate limit, all that stuff. Ah, I just remembered. We need a place to input fuel, don't we? I forgot to set that port up, didn't I? We can just simply do this. We can break this right here. And this is what these entanglo porters are for. I'm gonna stick this down and I'm gonna stick a port right in front of us. So right here, right? Actually, I don't want it right there because that looks ugly. To make sure that this outputs fuel like we want it to, we gotta find our fissile fuel here. Click set. So pressurize tube, bam, put that on there. And this should be set to output on the top for gases. So we could just do output auto eject. And now when we click this, it should get some fissile fuel in here, which it does. It already has 200,000 millibuckets, which is great. It has no coolant. So we got to come over here and we just set that up by pulling these right here. 
And these things pull a lot, like a pretty good amount. And you can see that it's filling up. If I turn on my shaders, it'll fill that up and uh, kind of make it look a little bit better. If I go back now, this is a completed multi-block. So the thing is, is we don't want to turn this on because we don't want anything to happen yet, right? If we turn this on and the power, like the heated cool tank, the, this is basically for the steam. And then we have the waste sink. If that fills up too quickly or whatever, we become irradiated and that's not good. So just to make sure we want to connect these up here, this is going to be our input right here because this is going to output water right there. And this is going to be our reactor port to output into this vent right here. This is going to be our steam input. Uh, input. And of course, we want some kind of power set up over here. So what I'm actually going to do, because I don't want this power directly going into our system, like because then it's just it's not going to work as well as I'd like it to in case something needs it. I'm I'm actually going to set up an entangle porter here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place an entangle porter right here and then we're going to grab our basic universal cable and we're going to slap this down right here. We're going to set this one into reactor power, right? That's what we're going to set this to. And then I'm going to scroll down, make sure it's set, which it is. It's set right here. And then I'm going to make sure in our energy here, we go, we find energy. And we make sure it's set to input on the top and it is. So when this thing creates power and it does get power, it will put it into here. Let's head back to our other factory, our mechanism factory. And I'm going to do the same thing over here, except for I'm going to import it into our induction matrix. So I'm going to break that and I'm going to place this down and put this here. So now I just connect to reactor power here, click set. And then in this config, we'll do energy and we'll do output on the top. And we want to make sure to uh, auto eject the energy that it gets. So back to the safe factory over here to make sure everything's working right and properly. All right. I don't want to turn this on just yet because I'm scared. I can't turn it on yet. We don't even have output waste set up properly, right? We ain't got none of this set up. What am I thinking? I was going to click the button, y'all. Let's go do it. We're going to have a problem. We ain't going to do that yet because that's all set up and stuff over there, but we aren't going to do that yet because we need to set up an output waste system. So let's head back to the house first and let's go ahead and grab some recipes for this. Okay. We're gonna need a radioactive barrel. This is like incredibly important. You're gonna need several of these. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the recipe and lag a little bit and shove that back in there. So we're also gonna need a couple of new things, which is actually really cool. I guess this one's not new right here. We already know how to, uh, to do this, but I'm gonna go ahead and grab the recipe. But we are gonna need something new, the solar neutron activator. This is pretty important. And the reason why you will see later on down the road on the next episode of Dragon Ball. So the solar neutron activator takes nuclear waste and it actually turns it into polonium. You can also make tritium. I don't really know what it, to, to use that. I mean, that's for lithium into tritium, but I don't really know what that's used for. I don't really care for right now because I just want to get this nuclear waste into polonium. Because you do need the polonium into a pressure into a pressurized reactor chamber and that's how you end up turning it into polonium pellets which you will need for several recipes for the all the mod star so i'm gonna go ahead and get those two things going so let's go ahead and make a couple of those so we're gonna go ahead and make i don't know how many we need i'm just gonna make three for the time being oh we're missing these hdpe sheets Oh, we're going to have to, we're going to have to use those. We're going to have to hold tight on those. I forgot about those. The recipe for this one is kind of important to look at. You need bronze, which is kind of interesting. You need the elite control circuits, reinforced alloys. Obviously you're going to need a steel casing, but these HDPE sheets, uh, you're going to need these pellets, or you could take three pellets and put them into a enrichment chamber and get a sheet like that. But we're going to need three of them. And to make these, you actually need oxygen mixed with ethylene with substrates. This is actually uh, something where we could do. We can test some of those gas burning generators for power. We'll have to do this a little bit later down the road. So what that means is we're going to need some more storage barrels or whatever before we can make any of those. Thankfully, we don't need those sheets to make these isotopic centrifuges. We can go ahead and just make uh, three of those for the time being and just grab those real fast. And if we look at this nuclear waste and we look at it in the isotopic centrifuge, you can see that it makes plutonium. So let's head on back over here to the safe factory that won't be very safe for very long. And let's see how we want to set this up. Realistically speaking, ah! we got to figure out how we want to do this. I want to do it like this. I'm going to get a little bit of room. Boop, boop. Ooh, and then in the center here, I'm going to take, I didn't even make those barrels, bro. I need to make these barrels, put these in the center like this. Now, listen, do not break these once they get stuff inside of them. If you break these, the whole world, you know what? Let's, let's talk face to face. If you break those, everything in the area becomes radiated and it takes for 
forever to clean it up. Okay, I'm just gonna put that out there. Just letting y'all know. Once we start pumping some stuff inside of it, don't touch it. Don't break it. You can't move them if they got stuff inside of them. Okay. I wonder if the mechanism like cardboard boxes work on it. Just so you know, just don't do it. Okay. Just don't even chance it. I can probably somebody go test that in like a personal world. That's not like, listen, test it in a creative world. Okay. I'm not going to test it. I ain't got time for that. Don't test it in your personal worlds. But if somebody wants to kind of, you know, go uh, do some science, figure it out, put a mechanism cardboard box on one of these suckers and break it when it's full of radioactive waste. Uh, hopefully nothing bad happens, but come back and let us all know. So now we're going to go ahead and output this waste. Now this waste is actually a uh, chemical. It is a liquid. So if I come over here and I look, I'm going to have to put the mechanical pipe. Oh, it's not a liquid. Apparently radioactive waste is a gas. All right. I was wrong. How is this not? A, how is this? I don't understand. How is that a gas? Anyway, we're going to pipe this off over here. There's going to be our inputs and you can actually pipe from underneath. You have to pipe from underneath if you want to pipe out like that. I don't. I want to pipe to the side like this and then we're going to pipe like this. What I'm going to do is eventually when I have those ultra nerve neuron solar neuro solar neutron activators that's what it is when i have those i'm going to pump them over here too so i'm just going to kind of act like i got those real quick so boop, boop, boop. they're going to go right there right that's kind of what i want to do and uh, these guys right here will turn that radioactive waste into something usable but we need power for these things too so let me grab a flux point real quick. This is the thing that don't like things in the top, isn't it? You got to place it from the side. That's kind of annoying. I ain't gonna lie. Power is going in there. Oh, this is what am I doing? You can't put it right there. So we have a way to off put the radioactive waste for right now. We kind of want to decorate this too. That'd be kind of cool if we decorated this a little bit. Man, I really want to make these solar neutron activators. Okay. And you just need HDB sheets. So technically speaking we could technically turn the sucker on and have this going right because we have this going in we have no way to output whatever these make so that's probably kind of important isn't it maybe we break the bottoms out and output it to something let's go ahead and set up the output for this let's set this up over here so that way we can just go ahead and make some of these plutonium pellets and then we're going to take these pressurized tubes and we're going to go across the bottom like this we're going to go across the bottom until we hit right here. And then we're going to put that entangle porter right on top of it. I don't even know if you could put plutonium in here. So it, I'm just, just in case you can't put plutonium in here, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to pipe this up like this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just stick these on top of this. I think you can put these plutonium in this. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Having these over here should be okay for right now, right? We're about to find out, I guess. And uh, so basically I come over here, click his button and we're going to see if I'm going to die. So right now there's no heating. There's no steam in here. And that's what the, the water is for right now. If I come over here and click activate, nothing is going to happen because right now, um, basically it's set to like 0.1 and barely nothing's going to happen. So I'm just going to go ahead and go set this to one. I'm actually going to get froggy and set this to three. And we're going to see how this works. I'm going to click this button and it's going to, we're all going to die. Oh, that's loud, bro. That's real loud. Oh, we see our steam over there kind of building up. All right, hold on a second. Let me turn this off. Bro, that was louder than it should be. You know, this is probably a bad thing to have the sound off. Cause if I have that sound off, think about it. I won't be able to hear. Oh no. I won't be able to know if it's going. So we got the heating rate up here. It's 59.9 millibuckets per tick. It's keeping enough water. It's keeping enough fuel. And we have the waste tank empty. So that means it's actually going out into the waste tanks over here. We can see that it's actually filled right here. And I just realized this is, this is not set to input in the front. So we can go ahead and set that up. So if I go over here to gases, we want to make sure the input is right here. Same thing here. We want to go over here. We got to go gases. Oh no. Why aren't you taking my waste? This is all, this is still on. Okay. So I'm going to hit scram to turn this off just in case things get a little bit testy, right? If we come over here. This thing was actually generating a lot of steam because it kept steam inside of it. And then it was generating some power. We're going to check that in a second. I want to make sure that we, if we get this fixed, let's see when I configure it like that. If I click this back on, will it actually start doing something? Hello. Why aren't you working? Well, I just found out this plutonium will not go into these chemical tanks because they're radioactive. So I'm going to go ahead and set that up. And I think it's pretty simple to set up, right? So I got to be careful because if you break these pipes, any of these pipes with this stuff that's still in it, I'm, I'm 
we're working on this. This is a work in progress. Don't worry. If you break any of this pipes with this stuff still in it, it will become re radioactive and we're not, we're not trying to have that. So let's go ahead and make us one of these pressurized reaction chambers here. Apparently I hadn't had that before and now I got the quest completed. All right, so now that we have one of these, what we want to do is we want to set this up to where it inputs the plutonium and outputs the radioactive waste back this way, right? So we're going to need to input the plutonium and we're also going to need power. So I think the most simple way to put power is just to stick it right there and we'll set this up a little bit later, a little bit better later. We want to put the, it's plutonium and water, I do believe is what it is that you need. So yeah, we're going to need some water and uh, we're going to need the plutonium inside of it. So this is going to be a lot of gases all at once. So the safest thing to say is that we want the reactor stuff to go in here. This has now got plutonium in it and we can't break it, but these pipes are now safe to break. And I will fix this now after we get this set up. So we also need some water. So another handy dandy sink. All right, now the sink should be pushing into here and we capped it off so nobody sees what I did. And all we have plutonium and we have water and it should, once we get that fluoride dust, it should turn into our plutonium pellets. So we need fluoride dust. How do we get that? You need to put a fluoride crystal into a crusher to get the dust. That's simple enough. You know, I just realized the reactor is, okay, the reactor is not running. I just had a heart attack and thought the reactor was running this whole time. So we're gonna come back to this mess that I've made in just a second. We're gonna go back over here and uh, please don't blow up while I'm gone. So now I'm actually going to do the same exact thing that I did here and I'm gonna put a crusher over here. What I'm actually gonna do is just gonna come over here and steal it from this one right here. And uh, we'll, we'll replace that later. And I'm gonna stick the ultimate crushing factory out here. We're gonna come over here to the item config and we're gonna clear everything. I'm just gonna go ahead. I just cleared all the item config and stuff like that because I don't really need this right now. I tell you what I do need. This right here, will. I'm gonna need another of these energy distributor modules. So we are gonna make another crafter and we're gonna connect it in the back just like this one. And uh, let me do that. And then as long as it's pointing towards what I'm trying to point it towards, it should be fine. And now that we have this one, we should just shift click here and then throw this back in here and it should be able to have more. We're also going to need an importer. We're gonna stick this on top just like that. Let's go back to the base real quick and grab that recipe. Here's the recipe, click the button, grab the recipe from here, head back down here and we're gonna go ahead and shove this in here just like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and make myself the network stuff because we're gonna need one for out there. Continue adding to my wall here. And then let's think about this. To get back into the radioactive waste barrel, we're going to need to output this out of the back and then all we need now, so we have the plutonium, we have the water, we need those that dust. We're gonna need multiple of them anyway. We're gonna need the solar neutron activators over here too. So we're gonna need multiple of these reaction chambers and we're gonna need the fluoride dust for both of them or rather all of them. So what I'm gonna do is gonna have, go ahead and break these cause we don't need the, those there. And now honestly, I wanna go ahead and make us some fluoride dust so we can get the plutonium that's out of here. So I'm gonna go ahead and request it real quick. I had to run back to the base and grab some more of this dust here because I already set up the thing because I didn't actually set the outputs and stuff. So slam this in here. And I just realized that you need a whole thousand millibuckets of, of this stuff to actually produce one pellet. Oof. Yo, I wonder if I break this, if it'll like be radioactive as hell. I think we just have to commit at this point, don't we? For this to be right here. Let me go ahead and just reset this whole thing up better. I guess we really only have one choice. And that's to see if it's gonna be radioactive when I break this. Ah! Yo, that noise can be good, right? I bet you're all wondering if I uh, blew my whole world up. You will be finding out in the next episode as I, uh, you know, try and clean up my mess. These reactors are actually proving to be a lot more difficult than I thought they would be, mainly because of the setup afterwards that I obviously totally didn't prepare for. This is the first time I've ever set something up like this. And uh, yeah, I, I uh, thought it was gonna be easier than it was and uh, I was wrong. If you guys are enjoying this series, this video, make sure to hit that like the subscribe button i really do appreciate y'all for taking the time to watch it i didn't want this episode lasting like six years you're gonna have to find out on the next episode what i do to clean up that mess as always y'all thank you so much for watching and uh i'll see you next episode Bye -bye!